we lay the knife forward as we come down. So we start out this way over the rib bone or over the backbone, the spine. And as we come forward, we lean it down the handle, the knife goes down. Uh, like a so, just like that. And then we'll get rid of the serrated knife and we'll go to. This is the first time this camera has experienced fish slime. Like a proper amount of fish slime, and I'm real happy about that. <laughs> YouTube has um, changed things around and I need to state in the beginning of every movie if these movies are targeted for a child audience. <laughs> these movies are not for children. Absolutely not. They are not for children. Tom, I am really sorry. I, I'm going to... Um, in the future, I'm going to give a, I'll give a Tom warning in these movies before I, uh, I used to edit the, the curse words out. Like, it's too much work. I'm kind of happy about this because there's something I've been wanting to say. And that is this. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a wonderful day. Go f your hat. Cheers. Hey there, welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. Fishmonger Jim here. This is the uh, the first movie I've made with my proper camera, and I'm going to be filleting this striped bass today, which I caught oh, two days ago. On uh, well, I'll put the I'll put a link to the movie here. I don't need to explain where I caught it and. What happened that day was a great day. I came home with this fish. Beautiful fish. And uh, I'm going to fillet it today for you. I've got the Dexter Russell 1378. I've got some a cheap Chicago cutlery knife that's for skinning. And I have altered the, the tip dimensions on this knife to make it more conducive to skinning. And then I have uh, a couple of serrated knives. The serrated knives will come... You'll understand why I'm using the serrated knives in a minute. And then I have uh, my Dexter Russell fillet knife. And maybe I use one or more of them. I got a fillet around this camera, so bear with me. I'm going to start with this knife, the serrated knife. I don't know if you know this, but if you run the knife, the serrated knife, away from you. On the steel, it realigns the burr on the edge. You can make it sharp. Now, when I filleted the other two fish that we got that day, this knife didn't really didn't really uh, cut the cut the mustard or the uh, the striped bass. That's why I brought this home from work. This is my work knife. This is my my pleasure knife. Ah, <laughs> uh, and you're you're just totally in the way. But the serrated knife is just to get through the scales. I'm not scaling this. I'm going to be flying it. Take the skin off and bones out. And then we're going to cut the dark meat out. So the first cut is going to be behind this fin right here. And if you feel, there's a, there's a bone right behind the, uh, this fin. And we're just going to go in to the spine like that and you notice I'm not just cutting straight down that away I'm cutting in because there's a fair amount of meat up around the head there that's how you get a better yield on your straight bass fillet session and then there's a uh, so under this fin there's a couple of bones that run down that way and then this the uh, the pelvic fin there's a couple bones that run out this way, and they trail behind that fin a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in there, and we're going to go right out there. We're going to aim for the back of that fin right there. You see that? Aiming for the back of that fin. 
and we don't want to cut too deep with that because we don't want to we don't want to make an undo mess with the fish cut the bloodline the uh you know make a mess in your kitchen which is where i'm filleting this right now so the next cut is just going to be to get through the scales on this fish so you notice I don't have the tip of the knife. I'm not doing it with the tip. The tip is the, the dullest part of the knife. I'm going to be doing it with the, the long part of the knife. And when I draw back this way, you'll notice the, stales are, the scales are stacking up on the serrations. And if you do it right, they'll stack up in series. Yeah, I'm going to be mopping the floor tonight. Probably not. Probably not mopping the floor tonight. I'll deal with the scales tomorrow or the next day. I don't know. That's it. So we're in through the skin. And the the rib bones are kind of tough on these fish. So maybe I'll just take the side this side off with this knife. So ouch. So the first pass is through the skin. Second pass, there's a bump, which is the spine that runs down this way. Brought the tip of the knife into that bump and ran down. And I'm using a fair amount of pressure down like that, you know, to get the tip of the knife on that, on the inside of that bump this way. And then you bear down and you get into that spine. The next cut is going to be up the one side of the spine. And this is where it's going to get difficult because the next cut. If you notice, I'm drawing from the head to the tail with all the cuts this far. Because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, I don't know, watch this movie in a mirror or watch it, um... Watch a different movie, maybe. The next cut is going to be down this direction. So, halfway between the vent, the vent right there. And the, uh, the pelvic fin, right about halfway, right about here, we're going to insert the knife and pull up over the rib bones. And like I said, I got a camera, I got, there's a whole lot of stuff in my way. I should be able to do it. Okay. And as I go forward, I kind of increase the angle on that knife. So start back here and then as you get forward you lay the knife up more and more so start back here and then as you get forward you increase that angle and we go over we go over the rib bones but through the pin bones and here's where this knife is not very useful because it's so sharp that we just sharpened it that's where the dexter russell 1378 comes in this fish was bled wasn't bled very well. So the next cut, you see where these are the rib bones here. The next cut is going to be down the top side of the rib bones. And then over the spine when you get behind those rib bones. And then you just pull out the other side. I could do it with one, with one or two passes on the other side. But like I said, there's a camera. And a bunch of lights in my way. So we're going to do it in three or four. So when you get here, there's a little bit of connective tissue behind this, this fin here. You just free that up. Right jaw. Uh, right, right, right jaw. And then you get the, the tip of the knife out the other side. And you draw back. And that whole side will come off. Oh, he's got something in his belly. That's going to be exciting to figure out what that was. That's it. That's one side. One beautiful side of this 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 striped bass. All right. Now we'll put that in the sink for now. He's got a really full swim bladder. You see that? So the second side is always more difficult. I'll flip the fish over. Maybe I'll, I, you know what? Hang on a second. All right, so the second side is essentially like the first in reverse. We're going to go from the same spot around the cameras. Good job. 
up around the head like so and then aim for that fin down the yonder way all right like that and then here's a here's a tip and uh so that the the scales are really i don't know what you're seeing the scales are really tough down here like if you think about a fish in a school that's trying to outrun a shark or something like that it needs to be tough on its tail to outrun and not get bit in half so the scales back here are really tough i wouldn't try to get in it it's very round back here so i wouldn't try to get in there because it's going to come off and you know like you're tired like i am it could come off and it could end badly right here right along this uh the the, the rear dorsal fin if you go in right here the scales are thinner and you can you can start to cut real easy right there and then you flip the knife around this way are you are you even seeing it you flip the you flip the knife around this way and you come out in that direction All right so again i'll show you with the with a novice Novice way to do it, first cut through the scales, All right, sawing motion, again the knife is not perpendicular to the stripes or to the, to the spine, it's on an angle, up this way, All right, we'll free up the front, got that, and then the second pass on this side and like I said this side's always more difficult because you got a big void underneath the other side is into the spine third pass is over the spine and where we had to flip the knife around before because those rib bones were in a different direction now when we get halfway between the uh, pelvic fin and the 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 anus we lay the knife forward as we come down so we start out this way over the rib bone or over the backbone the spine and as we come forward we lean it down the handle the knife goes down uh, like a so just like that and then we'll get rid of the serrated knife and we'll go to this is the first time this camera has experienced fish slime like a proper amount of fish slime and i'm real happy about that so here we're going over the rib bones and out the other side around the camera and the lights and then through and one thing with the striped bass they have a bladder that is very full of bile most of the time and if you if you cut that bladder you're going to have a yellow stain on your fillets and you're going to have to go back and and trim that out or uh, trim it out is usually what I do but yeah we got a we got a fin bone in there because of the camera because you're watching I got a fin bone in there but I'll show you what to do about that he's right there actually there's no bones in there but I'll show you what you would do about it if there was one there so let me clean this board up oh hang on a minute we gotta see what's in its belly Oh, the belly's empty. Oh, the belly's empty. How about that? So you can take these wings off. These wings. If you want to see how to do that, there's a movie on my channel, How to Fillet Striped Bass and Increase Your Yield. And that is all usable meat right there. I'm giving all this stuff away. All this, this fish I'm giving away and the people that I'm giving it to don't know how to deal with that so we'll just throw that down there let me clean this up and I'll show you the rest of it be right back all right so skinning fish skinning fish is not as difficult as people make it out to be in this case I have a an, an extra long knife but the 1378 I could do it with the 1378 it would just be a little bit more uh effort 
because the knife is just as wide as the fillet. So I'm going to use the, I mean, you could use any knife. You could use any knife you want. But the most important thing I can tell you about skinning a fillet is that if you're right-handed, like I said, this movie's for right-handed people. Do you want to, I'll explain in a second. So with the steel, you got the top of the steel and the the bottom of the steel we'll call that the bottom of the steel top of the steel bottom of the steel when you run the, on the top of the steel if you can envision that I'm going that way so it turns the burr on the knife this way okay turns it away from the cutting board when you go under the steel it turns the bird down towards the cutting board if you run the knife on the bottom of the steel and you go to skin a fish you're gonna cut through the skin striped bass has very thick skin so it's maybe not an issue with the striped bass you want to run the knife if you're right-handed on the top of the steel last and that will enable you to put the fillet down and not cut through it okay so Another very important thing about skinning stripe or any fish, any fish at all, is to bring the work parallel to the front of the board. Get your, your hand, your knuckles have to be off of the board. You don't want to do it up here because your knuckles are going to be in the board. They're going to be they're going to be on the board. You want it off of the board so that you can move the knife in a sawing motion. Uh, probably 36 degrees something like that depending on the fish they all differ and you just give a, a rocking motion back and forth on the board as you're pulling the fillet backwards or pushing the knife forward or some combination thereof and if you do it properly you should have depending on the fish a silver skin on the fillet like that right and there shouldn't be any meat left on the skin very important the steel that's where if you if you mess up skinning a, a, a fillet that's where you're messing up so to trim the uh, the, the belly lining I, I'm not that bothered by it trim the belly off of there and then we'll bend the knife a little bit with our hand here to get that piece right chop yep. and then we'll come out like that that's it that is a really nice striped bass fillet are we done definitely not there's a uh, there's some bones left in the fillet. Just to say a fish is filleted does not necessarily mean it's uh, boneless. It's a common misconception. So if you run your finger along the fillet from what would have been the head towards the tail, you can feel the bones popping out. And in fact, you can see that bone right there. You see that, right? That's a bone. They're roughly in the center of the fillet. And what you want to do is you want to come down on the top side of that. And they go in that way a little bit on the striped bass. So you got to put the knife in and pull. It's called a J-cut because I'm Jersey Jim. <laughs> yeah, they go that way. So you want to cut on the top side and the bottom side. And again, they run on different fish. They run back a little bit farther. But when you make that cut right there, when you pull that up and you make that cut, if you can't cut through, that means you got to cut back a little bit farther with your J cut. That's it right there. That's all. That's all bones there. And then I will show you that again. You know what? This is a new camera. This is a new camera, and I'm not sure if I'm actually recording, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit pause. 
and make sure that I just got that and then I'll do this again. You know what? I'm really tired. I think I got it. And yeah, I'm not checking. I'm going to be catching more striped bass before the end of the season. So let's make this movie again. Oh, and I got something else to do today. I got something else to do. Uh, this one thing that I'm doing is why I created uh, Jersey Jim Fish Vlog. Because I have uh, a striped bass head that I caught in the spring. Oh, sorry about that. Caught in the spring with Mayor Scott. And I macerated this thing in the woods. Uh, put it in, that is, put it in water. And just left the bacteria eat all of the flesh off of the skull so that I can taxidermy it this winter when the uh, when the fishing is uh, non-existent and I got those fish heads what three days ago four days ago I think four days ago and uh, they're on my front porch like they they they, they smell pretty bad and um, I have to put them in peroxide. There's still a little bit of flesh on them or fat or something. And I I I I didn't think I was going to be able to do that with uh any kind of accuracy with the amount of video files that I currently have. So I created the vlog. And I'm going to be doing that at the end of the movie. I'll show you what that looks like when I get there. But that's it. That's two skinless, boneless fillets. But they are not done. That right there, the the the, the dark meat on a striped bass, bluefish, some other fish. Uh, the dark meat has a really strong flavor, and I'm gonna show you how to cut that out of the fillet next. And there's a couple different ways to do it, but I'll show you how I do it. Let me clean up again. I'll be right back. All right, so I like I said, the dark meat, maybe not today. I could cook it tonight and it would taste all right. Uh, but the dark meat does have a strong flavor and it, it stretches it's pretty thin up here, the dark meat. It's not very broad up towards the front of the fillet. It gets wider in the center and then kind of uh, not so wide at the tail. I've seen people skin striped bass, like kind of the other direction this way, kind of up off the board. And you waste so much of the fish. Like that's a clean fillet. That's a clean skinning job. Why would I waste more of this fish? I harvested this fish. I want to get as much out of it as I possibly can. So what we will do is we'll cut it right down the center line. Okay. And we'll put this one aside for a second. And depending on the size of the fish you catch, you want to, you want to cut portions that you can effectively cut through with your knife. So if I was using a smaller knife, like the 1378, I'd cut them about that big, probably five, six inches. All right, I'll do one with the 1378, and then I'll do one with the uh, the other knife. So if you notice, it's coming up, right? That's not as thick as it is. It's just the it comes up in the center of the, the fish. So I'm going to cut down on this side of it a little bit, okay? like that until we see that there's some white meat underneath of it like that and then we're gonna put our hand on it like this and you notice my hands not down like this so I'm gonna splay it out so that I don't cut my fingers and then we're gonna draw the knife back and forth and I'm pushing down with a fair amount of force this is a carbon steel knife and it has some backbone in it but that's it that's all that's all the dark meat there a little bit of white meat but you know like I said there's a camera in my way that's really fishy stuff right there and it's full of uh, 
PCBs, dioxins, and heavy metals. So we'll get rid of that. I'll show you that again. This is the center piece. So you come down on the, the, the north side of that. And then yeah, you can see what I'm talking about. It kind of curves around this, this layer of muscle here. And incidentally, the, uh, the dark meat. So the, the fish, sharks, whatever, swordfish, tuna, the dark meat is what the fish, so the, the, the white meat is what the fish uses to normally swim, like to, uh, to swim in every day respiration let's say and then the dark meat is what the fish uses to sprint so that the reason it's dark it has more capillaries more blood flow to it and that is why it has a stronger flavor and stores more of the contaminants that's a uh, beautiful right I'll do this this part here this this one's really satisfying like the belly part and that part isn't really so you can see there's dark meat right up through the center into the spine we'll come down on the top side of that and we'll turn the knife right and I'm looking when I move the knife I'm looking the entire time where that dark meat is so I get the best yield out of the fish and then we'll get on the top side of that All right and you notice I'm not cutting through it I'm leaving it attached that's gonna help guide the knife when we start pushing down again my work is to the edge of the board my 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 knuckles are off the side of the board very important See that? That's a beautiful chunk of meat. Wouldn't you like to be my friend so that you could receive a piece of fish so expertly cut as that? That one's not too bad, so we don't need to cut down. We'll just get on the top side of that. We'll push down and saw through it like a so. I got a little bit too much off of there, but like I said, when you push down the knife, you cut a micron off of that. So this piece, we're going to go for the longer knife on this side and then the other side. And I'll show you the same thing with a longer knife. All right, lay it out. And then get on the top side of it push down with the knife and I'm really only looking at the back edge of the knife like back